Today I am forgiven His grace is why I'm living Praise His holy name The God is awesome
healed the sick and he rose the dead. Five, five thousand hungry souls he fed. There is no secret what he can do. What he done for others, he can do it too. the sick and he rose the dead. Come on, you can celebrate them better than that. Amen. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord one more time for our babies. Amen. We're excited about it. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Thank y'all, babies. Thank y'all so much. Amen. And to these youth workers, I certainly appreciate them too. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. God bless all of you. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. When you got it, just say, I got it. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my arm. I'm calling you Savior, Savior, oh, yeah, my mother, oh, 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 God speak to me and speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Open up our eyes that we can see what you're showing us. Open up our ears that we can hear what you're telling us. Open up our hearts that we might be receptive to your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. I, I'm not... I'm, I'm, I'm only been doing Father's Day three years and uh, sometime you can just run out of things to say about fathers but then you can't but I decided to if you don't mind just go to the text and see what it had to say about what Christ could do to help instead of just our fathers amen I love my daddy. Hopefully I get to see him this week. He's on a cruise. Should be docking in a couple of hours. Amen. And I'm going to rush to Houston to see him in a few. But I want you all to know that there's one father that tops all fathers. And that's the Lord God, the Father, which is in heaven. I want to begin reading and commence reading verse number one. Amen. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, a certain man, lame man, from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to enter into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us uh, then Peter uh, fastening his eyes upon him I read that again I want you to hear this look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping and stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Y'all, can I talk this morning on the subject, what to expect when I come to church? Happy Father's Day, but I want to talk about what to expect when I come, come to church. Thank you. Ushers, thank you. Amen. Um, first, I want to say thank you to the crew. Uh, and all of the women that hosted breakfast this morning for 
the brothers and the fathers. Amen. I show sure ain't good, which is why I probably won't preach long this morning. Amen. It was an ordinary day. A good day, but it was an ordinary day. Folks were going to their ordinary places. People were going through their normal routines. Merchants were busy marketing their products. The streets were crowded with pilgrims doing what they normally do. The children were playing in the streets, having good times with smiles on their faces. They were doing what they normally do. Mothers and fathers were watching their children as they did their thing, and it was just an ordinary day. There were some pious pilgrims there who were on their way to the temple that afternoon because they had to go up to make their sacrifices for that afternoon. And Luke tells us in this text that it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And in 3 o'clock in the afternoon, all good Jews would go to the temple at this time of day for their afternoon sacrifices. It was called Tamid. And it, it, it was what they called it, and it had to do with their afternoon sacrifices. It was a time of supplication, a time of giving thanks, a time of sacrificing themselves unto God for the purpose of what God wanted them to do in their lives. It was just an ordinary day. But brothers and sisters, in this text there is a connecting conjunction because though it was an ordinary day, it was an extraordinary time. Though it was an ordinary day, it was an extraordinary time. Though it was an ordinary day, it was an extraordinary time. It was, it was something unusual going on in this season of life in the people of God. It was an ordinary day, but if you look back one chapter, you'll find in chapter 2 that it was an extraordinary time because just a little while ago in that chapter 2, uh, we found that there were some saints that were sitting in the upper room and they were all in one place on one accord and suddenly there was a sound as a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where uh, they were all sitting. And then the Holy Ghost came and it, and, and it took over that place. And he sat on every one of them and in that place. And unique things began to happen. And they were, they were not what they used to be. Ordinary day, but an extraordinary time. Uh, since the Holy Ghost came, there's no longer business as usual. Since the Holy Ghost came... It was no more church as usual. Since the Holy Ghost had came, ain't been no ordinary going on in the house of God. It's an ordinary day, but it's an extraordinary time because every time they look around, the Holy Ghost was up to something. He's doing some things that they did not anticipate. He was doing some things that they did not expect or had always wondered could happen but had not been happening. When the Holy Ghost got on the scene, some things were happening that was no longer ordinary, but it became extraordinary. When the Holy Ghost showed up, Peter stood and preached before people, and 3,000 souls that day became Say no, no. The, somebody hollered and said, "Y'all must be drunk." And Peter said, "No, we're not drunk. Just some extraordinary things are happening." The prophet Joel said that in the last days the spirit shall be poured upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Everybody had to understand that this was an extraordinary time. Ordinary things happening on the day, but the time was extraordinary. And understand that when the Holy Ghost gets busy, nothing ordinary can stay ordinary. Um, I, I may walk the same, but my walk ain't the same. I may talk the same, but I don't talk like I used to. I may, I, I may look the same, but, but, but I don't look like what I've been through. When the Holy Spirit showed up in this place, that there was something in this place that took place that caused an ordinary day to create an extraordinary time. Peter and John, brothers and sisters, uh, were on their way to the temple expecting God to do, to do his work. And so, and so here they are leading apostles of the church, they are among a group of pious pilgrims making their way to the temple of the Lord. And as they go to the temple, they are going with, watch this, expectation. Now, 
uh, my question first off today is what do we expect when we come to the house of God? Uh, now, I, I, some of us, some of us uh, find this a routineistic kind of uh, a thing that we do. It, it's, it's, it's protocolistic. It's religious. It is something we do over and over again. But it doesn't get old until we stop expecting things. Um, uh, what, what is it that you can muster up in your mind and in your spirit that you can say to yourself, I need from God or I'm expecting from God? And, 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 and the movements that God makes because of who he is begins to make manifestation in the lives of those that continue to expect. Uh, movements of the text because, brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand and we have to know that God always has something for us some of us just ain't ready to get it um, the text reveals um, a few things that we ought to expect when we come to the house of God first of all we ought to expect communion the Bible says that they are going to the temple at the hour of prayer they they are, are going to the temple at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And when they go, they are not going for shape, form, or fashion, as the old deacons would say at the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 5902 Bill Street. They, 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 they're not going for that kind of thing. Boy, they are going not for an outside show to this unfriendly world. They, they're not going for uh, uh, what the choir is wearing and what they're going to sing. They're not going for uh, to see the favorite preacher. They're not going for uh, the latest gossip and the quickest mess that they can get. And they, ain't, they ain't going to, 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 to start a fight and to, and to get into a ruckus. These brothers were going to the house of God literally just to talk with God. Uh, how are you, you, you going to serve God if, if, if you don't talk to him first? I, I love the fact that he gives us unctions because I always have an unction to pray when I see that things are going on. Um, I, I've had many things that have approached me, have, have come at me in life that have caused me to want to do one or two things, to react or to respond. And I tend not to react because the proper response, according to what we've learned in our discipline in Scripture, is to first pray. And so when the people of God, at the hour of prayer, come to the temple to, to get with God. They are coming because they're getting ready to sacrifice and lay things at the hand of God. And Peter and John are here at the temple, brothers and sisters, and they are now getting ready to talk to God. I believe churches would be a whole lot better off if we had Christians that don't mind praying. I, I, I believe the church would be a whole lot better off uh, if, if we would learn how to commune with God. I, I believe ministries would be stronger if we could actually talk to God. I, I believe that our situations in life could go a whole lot smoother if we learn how to just talk to God. I, I, it, it, it gets old sometimes, I know, I know, and I, I probably shouldn't say that, but it gets old because sometimes we start feeling like we talking to ourselves. But can I get you this one? When you're hurting, if you just learn to open your mouth and just talk about it, but understand that if you are born again, baptized, believe in God, you, you, you're talking to the Lord. Um, put, put your cares in his hand. And, and, and it, it, some people would tell you, you're talking to the air. You're, you're talking to nothing. You're talking to something that's a poof of cloud. No, I'm talking to God. And I've discovered that in my talks with God, I'm able to feel much better. I'll talk to God. I believe our churches would be a whole lot better because... Uh, sometimes it's, it's not just about just your talks with God, but when you go to the house of God to talk with God, there's some other people there that can share with you some things in talking that would help you to overcome. There was an old song that we used to sing that said, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless things we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. There are some things, y'all, that we have no power to change, that we have no power to move, that we have no power to affect, but God has all power. I've been here three years, and there are some things and some folks that when I got here, they gave me a hard time about it. But, but, but other folks will say, well, you ought to say this, and you ought to do this and do that. And I said, no, I'm going to just let God have it. I would cry. I would complain. I would fuss. 
but I would ultimately give it to God. And when I gave it to God, folks started doing things differently. When I was trying to force my hand at it, it's when I failed. But when I talked to God about it and I let him have it, he turned the thing around for me. Not only, not only, not only, not only, not only, brothers and sisters, uh, am I supposed to be uh, in communion with God or there should be an expectation of communion with God, but then um, uh, we should expect compassion when we come to the house of God. Every, every day this brother is laying at the temple gate expecting to receive something from church folk that were going in. He's laying there expecting to receive something from the church folk that were going in. But, but by contextual implication, we can deduce that although he lays there every day, the church folk, instead of walking up to him, were literally walking over him. They were walking around him. And, 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 and do not deal with his situation. Have you ever, have you ever seen folks who, who don't help you deal with your situation? Uh, they, they, they just, they find a way to get out of it. Um, every time I get in trouble, I get out of trouble. But it's not because I'm avoiding my situation. It's because I'm ready to meet it head on. And don't, don't you know that it's easier to say I messed up and I'm going to get it right the best I can the next time? It stops people from arguing with you. It stops people from trying to make you feel like you're the dummy or the fool. It puts people in a position where I've cut it off. I apologized about it. I'm ready to move on. What can I do to make it up? No, they still want to try to make you feel bad about it. I ain't got time for that. I'm looking for some compassion. And God is a God of compassion if you are his child. Watch this, watch this. Every time I turn around, I've got a few people that just won't let it go. Uh, uh, there are some folks that just got to hang on to stuff that just don't matter. Uh, what happens when you spill the milk? Quit fussing with folks about who did it and why they did it. Just clean it up and move on. It's more milk in the refrigerator. Pour you another glass, get you a straw, and keep sipping. Ain't got time to fight and fuss with you about what I did or how I did it. I know the mistakes I've made. Help me to get back on track. The fact of the matter is that I'm looking for some folks in the church that know how to be compassionate. Why we can't keep folk in church? Because every time folk come to church, we're looking at them like they got boo-boo on them. Uh, like, like we've been here long enough and y'all ain't got nothing on me. Every one of us got something in the closet we're trying to hide. And instead of us trying to hide the mess in the closet, we ought to be revealing it so that other folks that's trying to come into the fourfold can say, oh, you did that too? Yeah, baby, I did it, but let me tell you how I got out of it. <laughs> Preach, Pastor Riddick, I am. I, they just ain't saying amen this morning. The problem is, is that we find ourselves trying to be pious and uppity like the pilgrims that were in the street getting ready to go to three o'clock worship. And, and, and the text, de Texas text is telling me that, that these, these brothers were on their way into the temple and they ran across the man that everybody else was walking around and walking over and ignoring him and, 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 and the problem with that is we forget that we used to be there. You might not be proverbial if you have been the, the, the beggar on the steeple of the church but you've been in situations before where you just needed some help and, and if it was nothing else but somebody just to pay you some attention some of us like to ignore folks uh, that need some attention. Now, I, I want to say this. Some things don't need attention. Sometimes when you're time to put a fire out, don't throw any more logs on it. Just, just, just move a wine and let the situation hush. And, 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 and when the opportunity is presented, then you speak on it. But, but sometimes you ought to just give somebody a hug. Sometimes you ought to just have something kind to say to somebody because even that person that's raised in hell and finds themselves in crazy situations, all, all they need is for somebody to say, listen, all hope is not lost. It can actually get better from here, but the problem is we want to beat them up some more. If you'd have done this, it wouldn't have happened to you like that. Somebody need to hear all that. They need some help. I believe that some people that are in situations, when you start looking, listen, if, if they're looking for help, if they're really looking for help, they don't need you to beat them up. They need you to help them. And watch this. The one that helps somebody has more weight than the one that won't help them. Because when you start helping somebody, they'll hear you. I, I wish I had somebody. When you help somebody, you got moments to be able to get them to receive something from you. 
needs. And, and the text, text shows us that, that there were some needs from this, that this brother needed, and, 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 and he was expecting some compassion. He wasn't expecting uh, uh, for people to walk over him. And Peter and John were on their way into the temple. They can't even get to the temple because they see this brother, and he asked them for some money. Uh, Peter and Jane, John, uh, uh, they, uh, they ask him for the money, and Peter, Peter gives this classic nine from the thundering diction of the King James Version of the text, and it says, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give to you. And he tells him, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up right now. And walk now. Now, I want you to understand because because I, I could see I could see the change in the scenery when this when this young man was 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 finally getting some attention from somebody. This young man was receiving some attention from somebody. He was at the point where somebody finally stopped and was getting ready to do something for him. But look, it wasn't what he expected. Uh, 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 I ain't got no money, but I got something that's better than money. Can I tell you what's better than money? If I'm a born again baptized believer, what's better than money is a name. I've got a name that can make things change in your life. I've got a name that makes everything different in your life. Song we I sang, we sang here, I love it. It says, Since I met Jesus. Y'all ought to help me. What's that name? Since I met Jesus. My life has changed, and because of him, I will never be the same. Peter and John said, I got something for you. It's not money, but it's in a name. Because at this name, demons will tremble. At this name, sick men are healed. At this name, uh, uh, dead men rise. At this name, uh, dumb men talk. At this name, lame men begin to walk. At this name, things begin to change. Not only do things begin to change, but brothers and sisters, things change for greater, better. Some of us are looking for a little change, but when God gets in the middle of it, things start happening in such a big way. It's, it, it's the things that you never really expect to happen that start to happen. You start thinking that it ain't going to turn out so good, but I'm just glad to be in the number to the point to where you've got an abundance and an overflow of things that you're looking for people to give stuff to. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. All I'm trying to get you to see is when you find yourself in the position where you're at the steps of God's house looking for something, I think we ought to be ready to receive everything. But those of us that are on the inside of the church house, relationship with God, we ought to have some compassion. The Bible says that Peter told a man, to stretch out his hand. And he told the man, not only stretch out your hand, but I want you to lift up. And the text says that when he lifted up, his ankle bones and his muscles started to get sturdy. And he was able to stand, watch this, not again, but for the first time in his life. The miracle in Christ in this movement is that this man who had never stood before, whose bones and muscles in his legs had never worked before, immediately God found a way to make him do things that nobody else thinks is possible. I want you to stop limiting yourself. I want you to stop putting limits and borders on yourself because I don't serve a God of limits and borders. I serve a God of exceedingly and abundantly. And then once we get to the point to where we find ourselves ready to be blessed by God, I don't want you to go get you a cup because the blessing is going to be more than you can receive. I don't want you to open up your pockets and your wallet, but I want you to be ready to dig a hole in the ground so that you can receive whatever falls out of God's hands. God is a God of overflow. And there's no way in this world that he's going to bless you with just a little when you are doing the things that it takes to get with him. Not only, brothers and sisters, should we have an expectation of communion. Not only should we have an expectation of compassion. But the final thing that this text is tailored to teach us is that uh, uh, there is also a godly expectation. I want you to see what happens here, and I'm through. The Bible says that when he was able to stand and then he started walking, that watch this, he began to leap for joy. 
uh, y'all missed your shout. I told you I'm going to get me some, some cue cards on the walls. But let me say it one more time. Uh, not only was he able to stand for the first time, not only was he able to walk, but when he finally got the ability to do the things that he's never been able to. Have you ever done something you've never done before? You ever got something you always wanted but never had? And you deduced yourself to just trying to get things that people thought were, were reasonable. I, I don't want reasonable stuff from God. If I'm trying to walk, I'm going to keep asking God to let me walk. If I'm trying to get somewhere, if I'm, if I'm trying to do something in life, I'm, that's what I'm going to keep asking God for. I want him to bless me with what I'm asking for. Now, the many of things along the way that he gives me, that's his favor. He, he's going to keep blessing me little by little until I get to the place where I get what I've been asking for. But, but, but if you, and even if you never get what you ask for, you still know that the one that was keeping you at the steps of the temple the whole time was God anyway. But oh, when he does finally give you what you've been asking for, when he does finally put you in a position where you can have what you've been asking for, what you've been dreaming of being blessed with, what God has been holding out on you for a long time. Let me give you something here. God was waiting on that shout of joy. I believe that if he had waited a moment too soon, he might not have leaped for joy. I believe that if he would have blessed him 20 years ago, he would not have shouted for joy. But God waited on the right moment in time. God waited on the perfect situation. Because not only did he cause him to shout the way he did when he did, but the text continues to say that when he started shouting, he went into the temple shouting. Watch this. And when he went into the temple shouting, brothers and sisters, everybody saw him shouting. And they all looked around and said, wait a minute, is that that man that's been out the outside asking for money all these years? Is that that man that people carry to the footsteps of the temple every day asking and begging for money? Is that that man that couldn't walk 10 minutes ago and now he's shouting? All I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, is every now and then, when God holds some things from you, every now and then when God keeps you from some things, every now and then when you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to figure out, Lord, how much longer must I go like this? You have to look around and say, maybe, just maybe, God is waiting on the perfect time. Maybe, just maybe. God is waiting on a perfect opportunity. Maybe, maybe, just maybe God is waiting on the right people to see just how he's going to bless me because what you're going through is not just for you. And when he blesses you, it's not just for you. But he makes you a public spectacle just so that he can show the whole world that he's got all power. I can imagine that some doctors probably tried to help him along the way. I can imagine that some people tried to help him with some crutches or something like that along the way. I can just imagine that somebody was trying to help him get his feeling in his leg and trying to help him to do what he needed done for himself. But God in this situation is simply showing everybody that would see and receive that if it had not been for God on that man's side, the healing is in God's hand. The deliverance is in God's hand. The help is in God's hand. Everything that we need is in the hand of God. Stop trying to figure it out. God is working it out. I just need you to learn how to hold on just a little while longer so that he can finish doing what he's supposed to do. Everything's got to come together so that it can work out, not just in your favor, but so that God can show out and show himself to some folks that didn't believe at first. You do know that there are some folks sitting in church right now that don't believe in the power of God. But once they see a miracle walk into the house of God, it does something different. Can I ask you a question? Is there anybody in here today that's been touched by the hand of God? Is there anybody in here today that's been blessed by the hand of God? Is there anybody in here today Today, that's been healed by the hand of God. You ought to be able to shout with me and shout for me if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where is it that I would be? I'm so thankful I'm
unto God that he made another man a public spectacle. I'm so thankful unto God that somebody was able to see what happened for my salvation. One Friday evening, they marched Jesus Christ up Calvary's cross. One Friday evening, y'all, they nailed nails in his hands. One Friday evening, y'all, they put nails in his feet. One Friday evening, y'all, they lifted him high and they dropped him low and they stretched him wide. One Friday evening, y'all, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and the Bible said that he died. Don't you know they tried to kill him? But what happened in the midst of them trying to kill him is the simple fact that Jesus gave himself permission to exit that shell called the body. He died on an old rugged cross. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, he died. Now touch that other neighbor and say, neighbor, didn't he die? He died and they took him down. Off that old rugged cross, put him in a bar or two. The Bible says that early the third day morning, he rose from the dead. Now, if there's nothing else that you need to hear, it's one thing, and that's this. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. And the love of God sees through my mess. The love of God sees through my hell. The love of God sees through my impurities. The love of God sees through my ugliness. The love of God sees through my selfishness. The love of God sees through all of this that I've got going wrong. And all the love of God says, I will send my son to die on your behalf so that I can find a way to receive you into my kingdom. I'm glad he died. I'm glad it didn't stay dead. I'm glad it rose from the dead just so that I could have a right relationship with God. What am I expecting when I come to church? I'm expecting to commune with God. I'm expecting to be, uh, be, be shown compassion from the people of God. And then I'm expecting to give God a praise for what he's done. God bless you today. I'm through. I didn't feel a hoop in my spirit, but I want you to know he's able. Yes, he's able. He's able. He's really able. He's so able. Come on, brothers. I want to extend extend the privileges of this church. And I want anybody that knows that you ain't been getting it right all along. And things have been shaky for you. Things have not always gone in your favor. You think that you've done too much. You think that you've gone too far.